Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Campus Bubble webinar series. Our webinar today is Avoid the Whack-A-Mole Approach to Yield Marketing. Uh, my name is Nika Schletzka. I'm the Senior Campus Consultant here at Campus Bubble, and I'm joined by Spencer Barkoff, our CEO. Before we really dive in, just a few logistics. Uh, we're planning to keep this webinar at about 20 minutes. I know for most of you it's the last week of the semester and you're looking forward to getting out and uh, taking a bit of a break. So we want to be mindful of your time. We'll have a few minutes at the end for Q&A if you have any questions for us and a couple of polls throughout to, um, to learn from you and to hear what you all are doing at your schools. After the webinar, we'll follow up via email with a link to the recording and the slides. And should you have any trouble during the webinar, please send us a message through your go-to control panel and we'll do our best to help you um, if anything comes up. So before we talk about ways to avoid the whack-a-mole approach to yield marketing, what is the whack-a-mole approach to yield marketing? Uh, and if you've ever played the whack-a-mole game at an amusement park maybe um, 100 years ago when you were little, you know it's a very frustrating game. You feel like you're never at an advantage because you're always reacting to and chasing this annoying, pesky little mole. And so we coined this term to describe the frustrations we were hearing of admissions directors and enrollment, enrollment managers in trying to reach their admitted students. Um, and in recent years, the whack-a-mole admissions game has only intensified, and, and that's for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the biggest is because there are more channels and more communication methods than ever before, more ways to reach your students, but everyone tells us it feels harder than ever to actually um, connect with them and to get them to hear your message. Um, and as we all know, more channels is a lot more work. So uh, a lot of the schools that we're talking to, they maybe they've scaled down their print media, maybe they've scaled back on some other things, but they're still working through a lot of different communication channels. And it can be very frustrating, especially if you're not sure how successful those efforts are. Um, for certain communication channels, such as email, it can be a little bit easier to assess the success of them. You can see open rates, click-through rates, but for other communication channels such as social media, it can be very difficult to assess how much students are engaging with your content. Are they seeing your posts? Um, when, what kind of impact is that having on their decision to enroll or not to enroll? But schools that we're talking to say that they're not, they're not thinking about getting rid of any of these channels because their peer institutions are, are you know, they're having Periscope tours. They're doing the, um, they're doing everything on Twitter and on Google Plus and Pinterest. So all of that contributes to, again, what we're calling the whack-a-mole approach to yield marketing. And at Campus Bubble, we believe that overcoming the whack-a-mole approach is really about understanding students, understanding their communication habits and trends and the way that they're communicating and getting information about colleges throughout the admission cycle. So meeting students where they are, we believe that, to me, I, when I worked in higher education, that was a, a phrase that got thrown around a lot. But to me, that really means, in the context of admissions, connecting with students in ways that they feel comfortable and understanding that it's really context-specific. Uh, just because they enjoy communicating through one communication channel doesn't necessarily mean they want to connect with colleges through that same channel. Um, a good example is the phone, ma making phone calls. A lot of admissions directors we're speaking with are still making phone calls to students. Uh, but students, if, if you have any teenagers at home, you know that they, they don't really want to talk on the phone. And in fact, many of us are not that interested in talking on the phone anymore. Uh, admissions director we spoke with earlier this week told us that most of his counselors were in their mid-20s and that they didn't like calling admitted students. So he was having to go out and, and get professors and deans to make those phone calls because his counselors weren't that interested in making them. Uh, but when it comes to meeting students where they are, text is something that's gaining a lot of momentum in the admissions uh, in admissions in general, whether it's um, in the research phase or, or the decision phase. 
And text has a lot going for it. I don't think that many schools are using text messaging, uh, but the ones that we've spoken with have had a great deal of success, and it's, it's got a lot going for it. It's relatively inexpensive, fairly easy to automate, and yet still personalize, and extremely high open rates, especially when compared to, for example, emails. So uh, depending on what information you're reading, anywhere from 98 to 99% of text messages are opened. And I just read an article earlier this week that said that 90% of text messages are opened within three minutes. Uh, so I think that that's going to become a very critical component of an effective multi-channel strategy in yield marketing. Uh, and from the latest 2015 e-expectations report, they found that 73% of last year's high school seniors said that they were open to receiving texts from colleges. Meeting students where they are also means making sure that your uh, website and emails are using responsive design. As you all probably know, if, um, if the student is having difficulty accessing your website on their smartphone, um, they're going to get frustrated and they're probably not going to come back. So that's definitely a, another critical aspect of a mobile strategy for, for yield marketing. Uh, and with that, we'll go into our first poll. We're just curious whether or not you use texting in any part of your admissions marketing. And uh, so we're going to launch this poll, give you a minute or so to, to answer if you'd like, and then we'll share the results. Take another moment if you'd like to answer this poll question, and then we'll go ahead and close the poll. So about 50% of you are using texting in your admissions marketing. About 17% said no, and another third said no, but we're considering it. Great, really interesting um, information for us as well. When it comes to uh, communicating with students beyond uh, texting, beyond having responsive design for your websites and emails, uh, everyone knows we have to go social to connect with students today. But we have to go social strategically. Um, and when it comes to social media, more is not always better. So it's very important to understand how students are using social media in different ways throughout the admissions process, throughout their college search, and then when they're making their decisions. Uh, so again, more is not necessarily better in that case. When it comes to research, uh, researching colleges, students are primarily using Facebook for that. About 54% of students said that they used Facebook to research colleges. Um, and that's because students see Facebook as as, as a source of information, whether they're going there to catch up on current events, uh, to find out what the Kardashians are up to, or to research colleges. That's where they're going. So when it comes to social, focusing your Facebook content on the student who is who's researching uh, is a good way to go. In the decision phase, however, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube are making huge gains. And every year for the past few years, students have been using those networks uh, more and more as they make their college decisions. Um, and we, from what we've heard from students, it's because of how, how visual those networks are. And students are, are looking for kind of a glimpse into what campus life is really like. Um, for them at that point, the numbers, the statistics, the outcomes, it's not that important as knowing what social life is like and um, getting a sense for you know, what the dorms look like, what, what students are doing day to day. But when it comes to using social media, again, if you're kind of feeling the whack-a-mole approach, feeling a little bit frustrated, maybe you have too many channels, focusing on these big four is key because these are the ones students use most. Um, of course, there are other social media channels that colleges are using and that students use to research colleges and, and make their decisions. But again, if you're limited in time and resources, these are definitely the ones to focus on. And with that, our second poll question, 
In addition to those big four, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, what other social networks are you using in your yield marketing efforts, if any? So we'll go ahead and launch the poll. Options are Snapchat, Periscope, Tumblr, Pinterest, and Google+. Oh, and this is, I forgot to mention that this, uh, for this particular poll question, you can choose multiple answers. It's not a select one. You can select all of them or none of them, uh, whichever ones you're using. And again, this is really interesting information for us uh, to kind of see what people are doing at different colleges and universities around the country. So we'll give you another moment or two if you're interested in answering this poll question, and then we'll go ahead and close it and share the results. So very interesting. In our earlier, the webinar we did earlier this week, there were a lot of respondents saying that Snap that they were using Snapchat. But today we didn't have anyone say Snapchat. Um, nothing about Periscope or Tumblr. But it looks like a quarter of you are using Pinterest, and 50% of you are also using Google Plus. So very interesting. And of course, with social media, it's constantly changing, and the way students are using it is changing. So it's really important to kind of um, keep a keep tabs on that. So again, in, when students are looking through social media during the decision phase, as I mentioned before, they're looking to get a sense of what campus life is really like, to see your college or university through the eyes of your students. And again, that's much more important to them because they're looking to make an emotional connection. Uh, perhaps you can remember back to your own college college search. I know this happened to me, but when I was deciding between those last few colleges, uh, it was really this kind of aha moment where I just felt that this was the right college for me. And for students, whether that's a connection with a, a current student, with an alumna or alumnus, um, or just really seeing what campus life is like through your current student's eyes, that's what they're really looking for to enroll. It's, it's really a feeling. Uh, and the key to that is incorporating current students' perspectives into your marketing efforts in as authentic a way as possible. Students today, um, they can see when something feels staged, even maybe some of these photos we're using here on the screen are a little bit staged. And, and students, students know that right away. They know when it's not real. So oftentimes in, they're using social media not to look for your, uh, your college's channels, your, tum, your Twitter account or your Facebook or Instagram account, but they're looking for the accounts of your students. Um, and of course, you can't control what students are doing on their own private um, social media accounts, but you can authentically incorporate them into yours. Um, at the college that I used to work at, we did a lot of live tweeting with our admitted students and got current students on Twitter to answer questions. And, and it was very, uh, very engaging and, and felt very uh, honest and authentic. And, and the admitted students really enjoyed that. Uh, a school that we work with here in Atlanta does a great job of incorporating students' voices by turning over their Instagram account to a different student every week. And the student can post whatever he or she wants. I was just looking at their, their feed earlier this morning, and of course, it's lots of selfies, lots of group selfies, uh, lots and lots of photos of food, of course. Uh, but that's what students are looking for. And, and it's, again, maybe from a kind of professional marketing perspective, it's not uh, what we would choose to post on social media. But this is, this is what students are posting, and that's what your prospective students, and uh, that's the kind of content that they're looking for. Personalization. It's another uh, key component to effectively marketing to today's students. They, again, growing up with social media, they've had the option, the opportunity their whole lives to give the thumbs up or thumbs down to every piece of content that comes their way. As the internet has progressed, it's gone from providing people with as much information as possible to providing people with the kind of information that they want, that's targeted to, targeted to them and their interests. And your students are expecting that kind of communication from colleges that they're looking for. I, I love this quote from a student, uh, a high school senior here in the Atlanta area where we're based. We did a focus group with them and 
asked them, you know, what are they looking for from college? Like, what would make a big difference um, in their college decision making process? And the student said that he wanted to know that they cared enough to find out about him. So again, that kind of that nod to personalization. A lot of colleges, when they're doing personalization at this point in the decision phase, it's very high touch. They're getting people on campus to make phone calls, to write uh, handwritten letters. But it goes back to whether or not students are communicating in that way, whether we're meeting students where they are. Do they want that phone call from your um, history professor, from a dean? I'm not sure if that's really uh, what the 18-year-old wants. They probably, one of our uh, colleagues here at Campus Bubble, his daughter is applying to colleges, and uh, he was saying, you know, I don't think that she would want to pick up the phone and talk to, talk to a dean at one of the colleges that she was accepted to. But what we believe, uh, and go ahead, go ahead and give you a poll question while I keep talking, do you segment your admitted students and create targeted content for them? Um, so that's something we recommend is segmenting your admitted students and depending on what those segments are, developing content suited for their interests. Uh, schools that we work with do that around students who are athletes, um, students who are living on campus versus off campus, maybe by major or academic department, even by students' location to help them connect with other admitted students in their area, um, as well as with alumni. So go ahead and give you, close the poll, and it looks like 80% of, oh, 88% yeah, of you or so said yes, and another 13 said no, but we're considering it. So that's great. A lot of colleges now are personalizing their content um, for admitted students. So to sum up, when it comes to reaching your admitted student population and understanding trends and expectations, whether you call them Generation Z or iGen, uh, mobile and social is key, but again, social is always changing. So it's important to not only understand which networks are, are kind of popular and hip, but how students are using them throughout their college search and decision making process. Authenticity facilitates the emotional connection that students need to enroll. So incorporating current students and alumni experiences um, in as authentic a way as possible makes a difference for them. And finally, personalizing content to the students' particular interests, um, whether those are academic or, or co-curricular, also helps them feel like that content was meant for them and, and brings it back to making that emotional connection. Uh, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to our CEO, Spencer Barkoff, to share a little bit of a story with you to help bring some of this um, to life based on our experiences. Great. Thanks, Nika. Um, I'd like to tell a story uh, now about Stephanie. Um, Stephanie is a VP of Marketing Communications at one of our partner institutions and works directly with our director of admissions um, at the same institution. And she came to us with a challenge. She said, you know, I've taken my website, I've made it mobile and made it responsive. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, um, but it's hard for me to measure the ROI and it's taking up a lot of my resources. I've got current students, alumni, even deans, believe it or not, uh, writing personal letters and doing calls, but I'm still seeing a high melt. I'm seeing a slight decrease in yield. And as the high school pool gets smaller and smaller, it's gonna be harder and harder to reach the numbers that we wanna reach. And let's take Hirsch, uh, the lovely individual on our screen right now. Hirsch, he's applied to nine schools and he's gotten into five. And he's, he's getting emails, but they feel similar to him. And he's joined these Facebook groups. Um, but again, they're similar. And as he goes on to Facebook, he's seeing 15,000 pieces of content, up to 15,000 pieces, different pieces of content, some of them being from mom, some of them being from grandma. And it's really hard to get your message through that clutter. Um, he's getting the calls and the letters, but as Nika was saying earlier, it's really not the way he likes to communicate. And Hirsch is a savvy customer. Um, he's not, you know, it's not the typical customer service experience that he demands. So the real question is, you know, how do I make my school stand out? And how do I do that in a scalable way? We're talking about personalization, but if I admit 10,000 students, it's really hard to personalize the message for each one. And sometimes tools are here to, to help us. 
So to tell you a little bit how, how Campus Bubble can help with, with yield marketing, we call it a Campus Bubble's clear path solution. And it's really in five different steps, personalize, socialize, analyze, prioritize, and realize. First, we help you personalize the message in a scalable way through a multi-channel marketing plan, which, incur, which includes personalized websites. Uh, these personalized websites are pearls, and if you haven't heard of them, I'd love to follow up with you on, on how they work. They present very clear calls to action. We focus on deposit, we focus on visit, we focus on the counselor, and each one of these calls to actions are dedicated directly to that student who's on the website. And our my favorite call to action uh, is to the bubble, and that's where we come in to socialize, in which we call the secret sauce. Here, it's a custom, configurable, private, branded social network uh, for just your school and your admitted students. And they can come here and they can meet each other. They can meet current students. And we do this all into groups by, and we group them by their interests. They can find a roommate, ask questions, access important enrollment information. All of this, the goal being to help them make that emotional decision to enroll. And you might be saying, well, I can just do that on Facebook. Well, this is where Analyze comes in. Here, we're analyzing how the different admitted students are using the network and come up with actionable data through what we call an enrollment score. And this measures the student's likelihood of enrollment. Um, and then we can then prioritize those efforts and say, okay, you know, I need to get my numbers up by a certain demographic or a certain data point. And here I can look at all the admitted students that have been the most engaged, but maybe haven't submitted their deposit. And that can help my counselors focus on the right students to, of course, realize our goals and hit the numbers and really drive yield and, and to reduce the summer melt. And, and all of this uh, really helps you stand out from other institutions, really helps you personalize and target your message in a scalable way, all to help prioritize efforts with, with actionable data to, to reach the enrollment numbers uh, that we're that we're looking for. So, without further ado, I will open it up for questions. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here today, and, and I hope uh, hope you learned something. So now, if you head to your your go to webinar screen, you can feel free to ask questions. Great. The the first one came in from Cindy. Uh, Cindy has asked, um, what's the le leg legality around texting and how does that work? Um, that's a great question um, because, uh, of course, that, that would be a concern. I, I, I'll pass it off to Nika to, to answer this one. Sure. That's a question. That's a very common question. Uh, when it comes to connecting to texting your admitted students, the law is on your side uh, because you received students' mobile phone numbers um, in a in a legitimate way. They applied to your college. You accepted them. It's perfectly okay to send them text messages so long as you give them the opportunity, the chance to opt out or to send that stop message back to you. And there are a few states, I believe, only two or three that have slightly more strict regulations. So I'd encourage you to check um, at the your state level what those regulations are. But for the most part, it's completely okay. However, if you purchased a list of students and you received their numbers um, in that way, it's not okay to text them as prospects or, or leads. Great, thanks Nika. Um, another question coming in. How, how is Campus Bubble uh, different than schools apps? Um, that, that, that's a great question. Um, schools app, it, it, for those who don't know, it, is, a, is another uh, company that helps with yield marketing. Um, they're a great product um, and they do serve, serve a similar fo focus when it comes to socialize and helping admitted students connect. I would say how we differ is, is really in the services and the personalization that, that we can provide. Um, we're not just a, we don't just set the software and forget it. Um, rather, what we do is we really come in uh, and add these personalized microsites. We come in on the marketing side to help promote not just the bubble, but also deposit and other clear calls to action. Uh, and, and, and I would say that I, I'm pretty sure that on the other, on, on the school's app side, um, they're very much a, a set the software and, and you have to create the content and the strategy. And where we differ is we come in and we really partner with you and help you reach those enrollment goals through not just a product or an app,
but really other aspects of yield marketing. Uh, another question coming in from uh, Mary. Um, should I still set up a Facebook account? I've been hearing that uh, Facebook's on the decline with Gen, with, with Gen Z. I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. Um, that's a great question. I think that there's a myth out there that that Facebook um, is going away. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it to Nika to, to dive into that a little bit. Sure. And I believe Mary was um, asking about whether or not it still makes sense to create a, a Facebook group for your admitted students. And we would say, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's free and, and students are already, uh, they are on Facebook. It's a way for them to connect with one another. Some of the challenges, as Spencer alluded to a bit earlier, um, even Facebook on their website has said that when a user logs in, you can see anywhere from 1,500 to 15,000 pieces of content at any given time. So that content that you're posting to that Facebook group, it's really, you're kind of just throwing it out into the, into the internet and just hoping that your admitted students will see it. And when I worked in higher education and we used Facebook, it was really, we were frustrated because it was so hard to know if students were engaging and to what extent. The, the data that we were able to get from our Facebook page was very limited uh, and just really didn't tell us much about whether who was seeing it and what impact it was having. Great, thanks Nika. Any, any other additional questions at this time? Okay, well, thank you everyone for, for joining the Campus Bubble webinar series, Avoid the Whack-A-Mole Approach to Yield Marketing. Um, I hope you, you took something away from today's presentation and we look forward to seeing you next month uh, to, uh, and, and join us again. Um, thank you very much. We'd love to discuss how we can help with the yield marketing approach if it makes sense for your institution and everyone have a fantastic holiday and a happy new year. Thank you.